window here. It sounded like a, a giant sheep. Bah, bah. Oh, I called down. Could you quiet down, please? It was Rodney, my friend who works here in the Big Harbor. He was playing his bagpipes. That's a, a musical instrument. It's like a big round bug with arms all over it. It sounds a bit like one, too. Anyway, I was, I was very surprised. You know, I remember when Theodore Tugboat first arrived here. He had a lot of new things to get used to. And he wasn't sure that he ever would. Theodore was a promising young tug from a small harbor up the coast when he first pooted into port. Bright-eyed and bushy-bumpered. Everything was new and exciting to the little tug. The big harbor seemed so... Well... Big. And noisy. Theodore knew everyone would be waiting for him to get to work. So he hurried along to the great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company, where he had been told to meet the dispatcher. The dispatcher was the one who gave the tugs their jobs. Theodore Tugboat reporting for duty, sir, he announced. The dispatcher turned around, but he didn't see where the voice was coming from. Ahem, <coughs> said Theodore. Then the dispatcher looked down a little and saw Theodore. Who did you say you were? he asked. Oh, yes, Theodore, Theodore, hmm, yes. A little smaller than we expected. Theodore smiled his bravest smile and said, I'm a very good worker, sir, and I'm ready for my first job. But the dispatcher told Theodore there was no work for him that day. Maybe you should have a look around the big harbor in the meantime, suggested the dispatcher. And so Theodore set off to explore the harbor. The dispatcher is right, he said to himself. After all, if I'm going to pull ships around, I need to know where everything is. Just then, Theodore saw a strange sight indeed. Two boats going back and forth, two tooting to each other all the while. Are you lost? said Theodore. We're not, tooted one of the boats, whose name was Philip. Lost, tooted the other, whose name was Fillmore. Well, then why are you going back and forth like that? asked Theodore. Because we're fairies, they both tooted at once. Theodore giggled at the boats. Then you must be toot fairies, he said. What a strange place, said Theodore. Boats who think they're fairies. Everyone knows fairies have wings. Then Theodore heard a very deep voice. Who are you, little putt-putt? He looked up to see it was a bridge. Who are you, replied Theodore. Why, I'm Benjamin B. Bridge, said the bridge in a very bridgey voice. Well, I'm Theodore T. Tugboat, said Theodore boldly. And I'm not a putt-putt. I'm a puller. The best ship-pulling tug around. And with that, he zoomed right under Benjamin. Silly bridge, thought Theodore. Anyone can see I'm a puller. The sun was beginning to set over the big harbor. Dark shadows were beginning to fall all around him. There were tall buildings on the shore and lots of strange shapes. It wasn't like Theodore's homey old harbor at all. The other tugs were settling down for the night at the great ocean tug and salvage company. Theodore was wondering which dock was his. Hello. A voice suddenly shouted. Theodore nearly jumped out of his bumpers. But then he saw that it was only a tug. My name is Hank, said Hank. What's yours? Theodore, replied Theodore. Do you want to see the sandy beach, asked Hank. It's really nice. I'm looking for my dock, said Theodore. Well, you can share this part with me, offered Hank. At home, I had my own dock, said Theodore. Everyone shares a dock here, said Hank. Theodore glanced around again at the scary shadows. Well, he said, finally. I guess I could stay here for now. Theodore was very tired. It had been a big day in the big harbor, but he couldn't stop thinking about his new home and all these new tugs. Tomorrow, the dispatcher will have lots of work for me to do, pulling ships. And with that last happy thought, Theodore was soon sound asleep. The next morning, the tugs gathered round the dispatcher for their regular morning work meeting. We have a big oil tanker arriving today, said the dispatcher. The following tugs are to report to Petra Pilot. Bodok? Hank? <laughs> Emily, you better get started on your special job. Theodore watched as the other tugs headed off to work. He was beginning to think the dispatcher had forgotten about him. He pooted up a little smoke just to make sure he knew he was still there. Now, let's see. Theodore, said the dispatcher. This is George. Follow him. You'll be working with him all this morning. Theodore turned and saw another tugboat. In fact, he was the biggest tugboat Theodore had ever seen. His big double engines went vroom, vroom, and his huge smokestack blew up an entire cloud of smoke. 
and Theodore saw the bright gold words on the big tug. They said, The Valiant. That was the most impressive name Theodore had ever seen. Later that day, George and Theodore were arriving at the docks. A big cargo ship whose name was Marguerite Pride was waiting for them, along with Pearl, the pilot boat. You must be Theodore, said Pearl. Hmm, a little smaller than we expected. Well, she announced finally, let's get started. Theodore was about to go to the front of the ship, when much to his surprise, George went in front as if he were going to pull. Before Theodore could say anything, Pearl piped in. Theodore, please hurry along to the back. We don't have all day. But, said Theodore, I'm not a pusher, I'm a puller. Pearl frowned. You're certainly not any such thing. Back home, I always pull, said Theodore. Have you ever pulled a really big ship like this before, said Pearl. Theodore stared up, up at the great cargo ship. He swallowed once and said, well, no, ma'am, not exactly this big, but I have pulled barges. George is the puller on this job, said Pearl. Well, Theodore just went silently to the back of the ship. No dock and now no pulling, he thought. All these new things are turning out all wrong. The tugs set off for the harbor mouth with the cargo ship. Theodore pooted and puffed as he pushed. She really was big. When the bridge saw the little tug behind the great ship, he smiled and said, I thought you said you were a puller. From up here, you look like a little putt-putt to me. Theodore blew up smoke, and Benjamin sneezed a great sneeze that rattled the rust off his railings. <laughs> Finally, when they had brought the cargo ship to the harbor mouth, George turned back towards the big harbor. But Theodore was feeling a little sad and stayed behind, thinking about his old home. He missed it very much, and especially all his friends. Just then, Theodore saw Emily, and she was heading out to the open ocean. Maybe she wants to leave too, thought Theodore. And sure enough, Emily passed the last marker buoy at the entrance to the harbor. She was going to the ocean. A tugboat can't go on the ocean, thought Theodore. She'll get lost or, or, or caught in a big storm. He began to whistle, stop, stop. But Emily thought Theodore was saying goodbye, so she whistled right back to him. Suddenly, Theodore knew what he had to do. He roared his engine and raced as fast as he could after Emily. What are you doing, shouted Emily. There's work to do, replied Theodore. You can't leave the harbor. I have to leave the harbor, called Emily. I want to. But Theodore pulled Emily as hard as he could, and he pulled her all the way back to the great ocean dock. Well, the dispatcher was very surprised to see Emily. What are you doing here? He said. She was going out on the ocean, said Theodore, but I saved her. George began to laugh. He laughed and laughed so hard his rails rattled and his cap shook down over his eyes. What's so funny? Asked Theodore. Emily is going out on the ocean, said George. That's because she's a V-tug. A V-tug, said Theodore. What's a V-tug? The dispatcher explained that tugs who had their V-words like Emily the Vigorous and George the Valiant could go out on the ocean. In fact, Emily was going all the way to Spain to bring back a new barge from the shipyards there. Theodore looked at the bright gold names on Emily and George, so that's why they were there. He hoped Emily wasn't upset with them. But the dispatcher said, You are only doing what you thought was your job, Theodore, and that's very good. You are just the kind of tugboat we need here in the big harbor. But now I think you'd better let Emily get to work. The other tugs all had a good laugh, and even Theodore joined in. A little later, Theodore drifted off by himself, thinking, Going out on the ocean. He had often dreamed of sailing out on the open ocean and seeing the world. And he was just a small tugboat, and the ocean seemed so large. A V, he said to himself. Theodore the V. It was Hank. Theodore noticed that Hank didn't have a gold V name either. I guess we could never be Vs, he said. Sure we could, replied Hank. Emily was just a harbor tug like us once. But you have to learn lots of things before you get your V, continued Hank. Like pulling ships here in the big harbor. But there are so many new things to learn, said Theodore. I'll never do it. Well, said Hank, maybe we can help each other. Hank waited for Theodore to say something, but Theodore was still silent. Then Hank said, we could go practice right now. Still Theodore said nothing. He was thinking again about new things and old things, about his little old harbor and this big new harbor, and new friends too, like Hank. 
No, he said finally. And then he said, there's lots of time to practice later. But now I'd really like to go look at that sandy beach with you. Well, Hank smiled his sunniest smile. It's right over there, he shouted. Just follow me. And with that, he led the way with the merry toot toot. And somehow, on that day, the big harbor seemed just a little bit, well, not so big to Theodore. And a little more like home. Of course, now Theodore loves it here in the big harbor. With all his good friends, Emily and Hank and George and Foda and Benjamin Bridge. And you know what? Well, I do, too. Because, well, sometimes new places just take a little getting used to. Well, I've got to get back to work. Thanks for visiting here in the Big Harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.